But for those of you out there that touch wood did not get into UM, there's actually another solution for you. However, there's a catch. Hey guys, YC here. So today I'm going to tell you about the story of how I got into UM, not once, but twice. Yeah, double the fun, double the paperwork, but definitely double the stress as well. And if you're wondering why someone would do that to themselves, well, sit tight and grab a drink, it's going to be a long journey. Well, when it comes to planning for your tertiary studies, people generally fall into two of these categories. One, we have people that pick based on the university of their liking because of, you know, prestige and also the reputation of the university, right? And then two, we have people that pick based on the courses of their liking because they are passionate about some specific, you know, subject. Then of course, there's me where I don't have any freaking idea of what kind of university I would like to go to and what kind of course that I would like to study about. Just kidding, okay? Uh, back then, I chose UM Biomedical Science as my first choice and with all the luck that I could get, I was lucky enough to be offered into this course and end up where I wanted to be right here, right now. So why choose University of Malaya or UM, right? Now, before answering this, it's very important to know what um, universities you are comparing to. Are you comparing it to um, other public universities in Malaysia, like UPM, UKM and whatnot? Or are you comparing it to private universities, Sunway, Taylor, Inti, yeah? Or are you comparing it to overseas top universities like Stanford, Cambridge, Oxford and whatnot? So it all depends on your perspective and where you're coming from. But here today, I'll just give you a general view of the benefits of studying in UM as a Malaysian student, right? A local Malaysian student. So there are two main reasons that I could think of off the top of my head. Um, one is that there is subsidized fees in public universities, right? So if you didn't know, the public universities in Malaysia are actually funded by our government, the Malaysian government, and therefore the cost fees at public universities are significantly lower compared to those of a private university, right? And this is huge, especially for students coming from average families like me, because the tuition fees in private universities are like ridiculous, very ridiculous. So just as an example, the MBBS course, which is the medicine course, in UM, it costs around, I think, 14k for five years. But if you compare it to, you know, private universities or even universities overseas, it can cost up to like 400k ringgit Malaysia. And that's just crazy, right? Because it's like 30 times more than the fees that you're paying if you study in a local public university like UM. So if you don't want to end up knee deep in student debt, right? Um, public university is possibly your best choice. Either that or you could try and secure yourself with scholarships, which is another thing that I would um, maybe share in a future video. Now that was reason number one of choosing UM or public universities in general. But point number two is the prestige of studying at UM because UM is basically like the Ivy League of Malaysia, right? It's the highest ranking university in our country and is also currently ranked number 60 in the QS World University rankings. Therefore, getting into UM would be as difficult as like talking to your crush, especially like for some of the courses out there, there's actually a limitation to how many students that they can enroll into. So yeah, a little bit of our rankings is that the highest weightage, which is around 40%, is actually allocated into the academic reputation of the university. And this is quite true as UM is quite well known for its strong emphasis on research. And actually UM is also quite reputable around the Asian countries. And lately we could see a lot of an influx of international students from China, Japan, Korea, um, coming into UM to just um, study for their, maybe their undergraduate or postgraduate studies. Yeah, even my new lab mates, like three of them are actually from China as well. But even though UM is considered like the top university in Malaysia, other universities like UPM or even USM, UKM, they're actually quite good as well. And the reputation might actually matter specifically for some courses. For example, I've seen some of the big companies from the finance or tech industries, they would mostly hire UM students as interns compared to those that are coming from, you know, private universities. But in the field of research, like from where I'm from, it very much depends on the program itself and also the facilities and the professors or supervisors that you're looking for. 
So whether UM is a good choice for you or not would depend solely on your individual circumstances because everyone comes from a different background, right? So one thing is that you would have to meet the minimal requirements at least to get into UM. So speaking about requirements, let's just talk about how to get into UM and also how difficult it is practically to get into UM. Now, I'll keep this part brief as each course has their own set of requirements and I'll put the link for the UPU online website down below and you can just check it on your own because most of the information can be found there. Now, let me just highlight three important things that you need to get into University of Malaya. First things first, your grades. Make sure to check according to which um, pre-U you are coming from, either you're from STPM, matriculation, A-levels or even diploma. Your grades need to at least hit the minimal requirements and this also includes your English requirements as well. Number two is interviews and examinations. Now just a tip, not all courses require an interview or examination and if I remember correctly, you can select up to four interview courses in your UPU application. So make sure to place them according to, you know, the priority of your choice. And number three, which I think is the most important aspect of them all, is luck. Pure luck. And it's very true because I've seen a lot of cases where friends around me have actually failed to get the courses of their top choices in their UPU selection. And they've got like the seventh or eighth choice in their list, which is not really the course that they wanted to you know, really further into. So even though you have all of the qualifications in the world with perfect requirements, you still might not get your preferred course if the goddess of fate, you know, decide that you're not worthy enough. So remember to just have some other universities or courses in mind as a backup plan, just in case things don't work out the way you want to. For me, I'm lucky enough to get into UM for my Bachelor's of Biomedical Science um, after my matriculation studies because I placed it as my first choice. But for those of you out there that touch wood did not get into UM, there's actually another solution for you. However, there's a catch. So what is it, right? Well, the sure way to get into UM is through this route called the direct intake. It's where students can actually directly apply for the courses of their liking in UM. So they could just go for that course, but the downside of it is that you'll need to pay the full unsubsidized tuition fees, which is a lot. So if luck wasn't on your side when you're trying to apply for UM in your UPU, um, and your family is actually able to support you financially, then the direct intake might actually be something that you can consider if you really want to study at UM. Anyways, I did mention that I got into UM for the second time, right? Uh, actually, it's just clickbait. Um, the second time is for my postgraduate studies, which is still technically true. I got into UM twice, and I made a previous video talking about um, my postgraduate studies right now. But basically, getting into UM for your postgraduate studies right is way easier compared to your undergraduate studies. There's just two steps. First, you'll need to finish your undergraduate studies. And then step two, you'll just need to apply for your postgraduate study of your choice. That's all. You don't really need impressive results as well because the requirements are, I would say, much more lenient and it's not that competitive compared to undergraduate studies because it's not a centralized system like the UPU. So don't worry if you don't get into UM for your undergraduate studies and you can actually join me and further your studies here in UM for your postgraduate. It's never too late, okay? But the postgraduate journey is definitely not for everyone, I would say. And I've gone through a lot just for my master's itself but I'm quite lucky because I'm still surviving. And if you want to know more about the details, go ahead and watch my previous video. So yeah, that's basically my part of the story and now I'd like to hear about yours as well. So let me know which university or which course that you're trying to aim for and why as well in the comments down below. Also, if you have any other questions regarding UM or biomedical science or even postgraduate studies, feel free to ask and who knows, maybe it'll be the topic of my next video. And do remember to check out all my other videos as well. Yeah, I also do like to apologize for the minimal editing and also simple video. But I'm still very glad that some of you out there find this informative and helpful. So yeah, just like and subscribe so that more people could find this video. And until next time, best of luck out there, right?